San Diego mayoral candidates Bob Filner and Carl DeMaio seem to have softened their attitudes toward each other and embraced new positions in recent debates. Voice of San Diego reporter Liam Dillon has covered the mayor's race since it started and joins me to break down those changes by the candidates. Liam, both candidates seem to be behaving somewhat differently toward each other. What have you actually noticed? Well, it's not so much that they're behaving differently towards each other. It's that the image they're trying to present to voters, you know, um, to take a step back. I mean, San Diego is used to electing sort of moderate, very kind of folksy sort of mayors, folks that aren't as not nearly as partisan as these two guys. And so they're trying to, you know, to be mayor, present an image that is like the mayors in the past um, and, and try to sort of sell the idea that they can be just as moderate or, or just a, or an image of the kind of mayor that San Diego likes to elect. But there has been some actual changes specifically changes. Let's start with uh, Carl DeMaio, for instance, on education. He's changed on that. Tell us about that. Well, he used to say that uh, the city had too many problems, financial and otherwise, to deal with education. The uh, city of San Diego does not have any direct control over the uh, city schools or really any schools. It's a separately run organization by uh, managed by a school board. And so uh, now he says, though, he wants to have more involvement uh, from the city. He's uh, championing a joint city council school board meeting uh, uh, this month. Um, he wants to sort of uh, promote some performance standards and is very much now talking about education as something that will be under his purview, where in the past he said he, the city wouldn't have time to deal with it. And there's a few other things, too. Sewage, uh, what Sewage else? recycling, yeah, two years ago. I mean, there's sort of this massive project going on right now to uh, know that it was it used to be derided as toilet to tap. Uh, that's not really dis discussed so much anymore. Um, but the process by which, you know, wastewater is recycled into, into drinking water, uh, Carl was opposed to that at a vote two years ago and sort of moderated step by step. Uh, and now he calls it in his environmental plan, which she released uh, a couple weeks ago, a trusted technology, which is very, very different from what he used to say in the past. Absolutely. And the border development, and also uh, he's, he's switched on that a little bit, wants to be more involved. Right. But also the downtown business. Tell me about that. That's yeah, his, the, his biggest sort of, one. The, the, sort of the biggest thing for me is, ch again, the change in rhetoric. Um, and I think this is the the place where we've seen him change his rhetoric the most. It's not just downtown folks, but sort of there the most. He's traditionally blamed for the time that he's been in San Diego, as recently in the primary, two groups for the San Diego's financial problems, government labor unions and what a group he calls downtown insiders, right? Um, and so he now is uh, sort of courting some of the downtown business leaders and groups that he traditionally criticized in the past to help donate to his campaign or be a part of his campaign, and they are receptive to that. And so that's definitely a difference in softening his rhetoric towards them. Similarly, I mean, I mentioned the pension uh, issues. He's railed against that ever since he mm. got here. Um, used to say that folks who were involved in making those decisions didn't have any political future, didn't deserve any political future. Tony Atkins, uh, now an assembly member, was a council member when she was uh, a few years ago during the pension. Uh, now, when she was named the majority leader in the uh, assembly, he now congratulated her. So it's a great development for San Diego. It, Very different. Definitely different. Let's talk about uh, Bob Filner. Yes. What are, has been his top sort of turnaround? Well, he, uh, in the primary, emphasized his opposition to three big things. The Proposition B pension initiative, which is, you know, 401ks for most new hires. Uh, the financing plan for the convention center expansion, uh, and also the plan to remodel uh, the, the Plaza de Panama and Balboa Park. And he described them in the strongest terms. They were a fraud. They were a giveaway. Right. You know, and now he says, well, uh, I might not like them, but I'm going to implement them now. Uh, and, and that's sort of different, he, again, sort of a conciliatory tone that he really hasn't taken when he was really bellicose about them in the primary. So despite these changes, do you think this is really a political ploy to get elected? Or, or do you think they're really genuinely trying to move toward the middle because of the feedback they've heard from people? Well, I think, you know, you're going to see in every election, right? You're going to see candidates run to the extremes in the primary, and you're going to see candidates move to the middle in the, in the general. And I don't think it's any different than, than, uh, than any other election. Although there is sort of a, the amount of shifting going on here is, is sort of, seems to me to be kind of unprecedented uh, in, in terms of what these folks are doing. If you do spend a lot of time, though, looking at their, at their history and their backgrounds, you know, like I've tried to do, um, you'll see that the sort of the move to the middle is pretty out of character. Um, for what they've done in the past. And so if you believe that history repeats itself, you're more likely to see some of these guys act uh, like they did in the primary than what they're acting like now. We only have time for two more questions. 20 yeah. debates are planned between Labor Day and election time. Why yeah. so many? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of overkill. I mean, I, but I understand it from the candidate's, candidate's perspective. You have an interest group says, hey, come talk to me. And they don't want to upset an interest group, particularly in a close election like this where every vote is going to count. Um, they have to show up. And so, you know, fortunately, um, that does allow these interest groups and folks to kind of see everybody's positions. But it, it is hard on them. And I, I don't envy their position on this. So they're saying yes to everybody. Exactly. Very briefly before we go, is endorsements. Uh, who's backing whom? Uh, 
Carl announced this week that uh, Jan Goldsmith was backing him as a city attorney. Um, that's sort of the only new one. Basically, everything else is what you would expect. A lot of Republicans lining up for Carl, a lot of Democrats lining up for Bob. Um, I think the two big outstanding ones that are out there, current mayor, Republican Mayor Jerry Sanders has not endorsed, and Assemblyman Nathan Fletcher, who was a candidate in the primary, also hasn't endorsed. Uh, they've both made in entreaties to both, and we'll see who, who they uh, line up with. We'll see what happens. Liam Dillon, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Peggy.